There's a bone to break, he'll break it. There's a bone to graze, he'll graze it. If there's an ankle to sprain, he'll sprain it. He's the obvious kid. Food that's gone off or hasn't been cooked correctly can contain harmful bacteria that attack your body. But your body fights back. Immune cells in your tummy try to kill the bad bacteria. Oh, watch out! Phew! Then friendly bacteria multiply and release toxins to stop them too. Then your body gets you to eject them. Sometimes your stomach muscles contract to push them upwards. Or sometimes it's downwards. Your intestines don't absorb water when you have food poisoning, so when diarrhoea kicks in, a lot of liquid is flushed out and you're left feeling dehydrated. So keep drinking water, but not water with bugs in it. Oh, no. This is our lab, where we're going to put our bodies to the test to show you how your body works. <laughs> ah, that really hurts. Just don't try anything you see here at home. Today, we're looking at digestion. We're going to follow the journey that food makes through Chris's body. And in order to do this, I need to get Chris to swallow a camera. This camera. It's a mini camera pill, and Chris is going to eat it. And it's not just a camera. There's lights, a battery, and a radio transmitter in here. And what flavour is it? Camera flavour. My favourite. It's a new bit of kit that doctors use to look at problems with people's insides. So we're going to go on a journey from my mouth all the way through my digestive tract. Let's go. It's going to take approximately eight hours for the pill to make its way from Chris's mouth through his body until it comes out in his poo. And the first phase of the journey is getting into the stomach, and this only takes seven seconds. It's amazing how quickly it's got into your stomach, isn't it? Yeah, it goes like that, doesn't it? And you can feel that when you drink cold water, you can feel it go cold in your stomach. Yeah. And here are live pictures from the inside of my stomach. The ridges you can see are muscle. That's what pushes the food you eat through your digestive system. So there's lots of space in your stomach. It's basically a muscular bag where food is stored while it's cleaned by stomach acid. Chris, now I want you to eat some sweets and we'll be able to see them in your stomach. Here's some water. These sweets will now make their way down to my stomach. Here, they'll spend a couple of hours being swished around and washed clean. It's a bit like a washing machine. And that's the reason you have acid in your stomach. It's not to break down food, it's to kill bacteria that might cause disease. And you might think it's a bit dangerous to have a bag full of strong acid in the middle of your body, but actually the stomach is coated with kind of thick protective mucus, and that stops the acid attacking the stomach. So let's see if we can spot those sweets. Yay! <laughs> there we go, two of them, side by side. That feels very private to look inside your stomach and see your sweets. <laughs> yeah. So the sweets and the camera will now be cleaned in Chris's stomach acid before being pushed out of the stomach through the sphincter muscle. The next stop in my digestive system is the small intestine. This is where the action really happens. There are the sweets from earlier. And you can see the furry lining of Chris's small intestine. It's made up of tiny finger-like things that help to break down food. The small intestine is where food gets digested and it gets mixed up with chemicals called enzymes that digest the food. And that's what we can see from these live pictures inside Chris. All that yellow liquid is the mixture of food, bile and mucus. And you can also see the blood vessels on the walls of the small intestine. The reason the blood supply is so good here is because this is where your body gets what it needs out of the food. It gets all the nutrients and it gets all the energy, the protein, the fat, the carbohydrates. And then this, this sort of sludge here a mixture of bile and the food that you can't digest and the mucus will go into the large intestine and that's where it gets turned into poo. Just... This is like tomorrow's poo. Right? <laughs> yeah. On to the final destination for the camera pill, the large intestine, and that means it's poo time. And the large intestine is the final bit of your intestines and it runs like this along here, out here and out your bum. The camera's now in much thicker liquid, and the main function of the large intestine is to take the liquid out of this and make a solid poo. Well, it's still quite liquid, isn't it? But there are much more solid bits in it now. And in fact, I think the camera's now kind of up against the next poo that I'm going to have, and it, it's going to become part of that. It's a very high-tech way of looking at your poo. Yes, it'd be much easier to wait till it came out. But then we wouldn't get to see my lovely, healthy gut. 
Hmm, lovely isn't quite the word that springs to mind, but seeing live images from the inside of Chris's guts has been pretty amazing. From the moment you swallow your food, just like the camera pill, it will take eight hours to travel a total distance of nine metres. From your mouth to your stomach, then from your small intestine to your large intestine, until it's ready to be pushed out as poo, ending up in the loo, which is where that camera pill is headed. Ready to see some amazing experiments? Yes! A triumph! It can get a bit gross, but we're going to show you how your incredible body works. Just don't try anything you see here at home. Today, we're looking at diarrhoea. Chris, you haven't seen my diarrhoea sample anywhere, have you? I can't find it anywhere. Oh, here it is. Now, let's get on with today's experiment, shall we? Have you got your sample? Well, that isn't very runny. I thought we agreed on diarrhoea. Look, I just thought it might be better to compare a normal solid poo with a runny one. Now, everyone gets diarrhoea from time to time, and one of the most common reasons is if you get a tummy bug, and the result is that your body ejects the contents of your digestive system as quickly as possible. Now, as you can see, Chris's plain solid poo looks completely different to mine. But that isn't the only difference. One of these poos weighs more. So which of them do you think weighs more? Chris's solid poo or Zahn's runny poo? As you can see, my diarrhoea poo is a lot heavier than Chris's normal poo. But why? Why is diarrhoea heavier and runnier than normal poo? Well, we're going to show you. Ah, oh, Zahn, welcome to my poo factory. Wow! Wait a minute! Are these my ballet tights? Yes. I'm just using them as part of the poo factory, and they are proving to be very, very effective fake intestines. But don't worry, don't worry, you can have them back later. First up, let's make a solid poo. Get the masher. And mash. This bowl is like the inside of your mouth, chewing up the food. To help mash it up, your body adds saliva, enzymes, and it's all washed down with a drink. OK, Zan, I think that's enough. It's time to move it from the mouth to the intestines. This is like you swallowing. <laughs> Must work. Once the mashed-up food hits your intestines, the muscular walls of your gut push the food along and squeeze out all the goodness. So you can see this rich liquid full of all the nutrients and the water is coming out of the guts and going into the body, which is these metal trays. And what's left is the indigestible stuff that's going to become your poo. Well, Zan, I think it's time to poo. There you go. Much, much more solid than it was at the beginning. Nice, dry, well-formed poo. We have made the perfect poo. And look how much water is in the tray. Our fake intestines managed to get almost all the water out of our poo. This water, full of nutrients, gets reabsorbed back into the body and delivered to where it's needed. So, if that's what happens to make a normal poo, what happens when you make diarrhoea? Well, it all starts in the same way. Right, Zond, put the food in the mouth and start chewing. Just as before, we have the same food and mixture. But this time, our poor intestines are dealing with a tummy bug. Time to swallow. So now something different happens. The tummy bug makes your guts draw in extra water from your body, pushing everything through your system super fast. What I've got here is a high-pressure hose, and I'm going to use this to demonstrate what happens when your guts draw in water from your body. Chris, are you ready? I am ready. Three, two, one, go! Here it comes. Oh, that's good, Zond. That's good. Oh, look at that. <laughs> that is amazing, Zond. <laughs> oh, that's enough. Xander's turned my perfect poo factory into the world's first diarrhoea machine. So, we've shown you that diarrhoea is heavier and runnier than normal poo, as your intestines don't get the chance to do their job. And all the water that should have been absorbed, like the normal poo, ends up in the toilet. And you can see that in our trays. There's almost no water in our trays at all with the diarrhoea. And that's why it's also a good idea to drink plenty of water or rehydration drinks when you have diarrhoea, because they replace the nutrients and water your body has lost. 
Speaking of drinks, all this experimentation is making me thirsty. Chris, I'm not sure you want to be drinking that. That's my backup diarrhea sample. Uh.